Hello, and a very warm welcome to our Health and You Community Wellness Series. The overall goal of this series is to create community awareness about health and disease with an ultimate objective to enhance self-care, reduce suffering, improve the quality of life, and increase healthy longevity. So just a few housekeeping rules. Um, your cameras and microphones are turned off. Use the Q&A feature or the chat feature to type in any of uh, questions or your comments, and we will address these towards the end of the session. This is not a CME CPD activity, so no attendance certificates will be issued. All right, so there are various physiological changes that we that take place as we age. In today's session, elderly health, understanding realities and challenges, we will be discussing special health issues related to the health of the elderly. Please join me in welcoming our expert speaker today, Dr. May Mahmood. Dr. Mahmood is the Assistant Dean for Faculty Affairs, Director of Medicine Clerkship, and Director of Student Academic Advising at Wal Cornell Medicine, Qatar. Dr. Mahmood practices as a consultant at HMC Hamad Medical Corporation and is actively engaged in teaching residents. Dr. Mahmood received her medical degree from the Faculty of Medicine at University of Khartoum in Khartoum, Sudan, and she completed her residency in the State University of New York in Brooklyn. Dr. Mahmood completed a fellowship in geriatric medicine at St. Luke's Roosevelt hospital center and a master of education in the health professions from john hopkins dr mahmood is board certified american board certified in internal medicine and geriatrics and is also a fellow at the american college of physicians and serves or has served on a number of international and national research and organizational communities dr mahmood's research interests include medical air education especially in assessment of clinical competencies, academic integrities. And she's presented her work in conferences, both locally and internationally. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Mahmood. Over to you, Dr. Uh, good evening. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, happy to be with all of you to discuss a very important uh, topic today, which affect all of us as uh, people, and uh, either personally or maybe uh, affecting our friends or family member. Um, this is different from the last topic I presented in this series, which is hypertension. Although it is common, it might not affect everyone. But uh, aging is affecting every one of us. Um, and again, either you personally or a family member. I don't have anything to disclose uh, or any financial relationship to disclose related to the presentation today. And in the next 30 minutes, I'm hoping to discuss some physiological changes uh, related to aging, also common health issues related to older adults and understand some challenges related to the older patients. If I can ask you before we start, I just want to get sense of uh, who in the audience, if you can just share your age, if you are less than 60 years or more than 60 years. This is anonymous. We cannot see uh, who voted for what age. Raji, we have the poll going. Yes, can you see the poll, uh, Dr. Mahmood? We have 45, no, 100%. 100% um, okay. saying 45 people have responded and saying that they're all mm -hmm. less than 60 years. And then we have a couple of okay. chats as well, all less than 60 years. Okay. Uh, yeah, I see the result now. Okay, so what age, if you are less than 60, what age you consider old? You can type that in the chat. We don't have poll for that. What is old age for you? Oh, 
So someone is saying 65. Rana is saying 85. Okay. Minu is saying more than 65. 60. 85. Okay. This is good. 63, 60. Above 80. More than 75. Okay. Okay, so obviously there is no consistency from 60 to above 85, which is consistent with uh, surveys uh, globally. I was sharing this uh, survey published in the Wall Street Journal, and they surveyed uh, more close to 3,000 people, different ages. As, and you, as you can see, younger people, age 18 to 29 years, they think old age is 60. As, as you go up, the, responder, uh, the respondents uh, age 65 and above, they think old age is 74. So it's, it's, it's different how you perceive uh, old age according to your current age. So people who say 60, but when they reach 60, they don't feel old or they don't think this is old age, they uh, vote for higher number or older age. This is study also done in Qatar and they surveyed Qatari women uh, and they were asked about uh, defining age based on physical characteristics. And as you can see, the same thing, younger women, they put 51 as older age, while older women, they put 75 as older age. For men, interestingly, the number is lower. They put 40 as older age for men, and 63 for, uh, uh, for older women to identify older men as 63. Um, it's, it's interesting. I don't know why uh, they recognize younger age for women than for men uh, as uh, to be old. There is also differences like younger women, they were, sorry. Younger women also uh, define mobility as feature um, for older age for both women and men, while older women, older women, they chose mobility for as a feature for older age for women, but they go with uh, body image uh, for men. The truth is, um, as many people say, age is just a number. There is no real definition. We come to Wikipedia, and this is a definition from Wikipedia. Aging is the process of becoming older. Aging represents the accumulation of changes in a human being over time and can encompass physical, psychological, and social changes. And I put the spelling in uh, British and also in American Canadian um, English. Aging is a progressive universal decline, and it is universal decline. This is true. As we age, we have many changes in our body, and also everything is slows down. The good news is it's not heterogeneous. It's, it's not uh, a linear changes. It's very heterogeneous, meaning that um, people don't age the same way. Like you can find 70 years old living the life of uh, 30 or 40 years old, being active, participating in activities. And you can see 65, 60 or 65 years old who, is, uh, who has very limited function and, and some of them all, uh, even bed bound. It's not a disease. It's also very important to recognize it is not a disease. Geriatric medicine, as you heard, I have fellowship in geriatric medicine. So what is geriatric? I think it's not well. Uh, known, especially in this part of the world. Every time I say geriatrics, many people reply, you meant pediatrics, and I say, no, the other end of pediatrics. So geriatrics is a sub-specialty of medicine. So people usually do a specialty in medicine or family medicine, and then they go to fel fellowship for one or two years, and they focus on the health care of uh, the elderly. Usually it's multidisciplinary, because as physicians, we cannot do everything for the elderly people. Usually in our team, we have nurses, we have uh, dietitians, we have uh, physical therapists, social worker, everybody is involved in patient care of the elderly. And we take care of the family, uh, patient, and the caregiver. And the main focus in geriatrics is the quality of care. 
a quality of life. We try to make them independent, um, active, and uh, take care of uh, that, uh, anything that impairs their quality of life. Geriatric in Doha is big and expanding. Since I came in 2006 until now, they really expanded and they have many services uh, thanks to the leadership uh, in the hospital. So they have a big hospital here, Romela Hospital is mainly for geriatric people, inpatient and outpatient. They also have inpatient service at Hamad General Hospital. They have home service. They have nursing home, both uh, a SNF nursing home, which is a skilled nursing facility for people who want uh, short-term uh, rehab. And uh, they have also wellness clinic. You don't have to be sick to see a doctor. They have wellness clinic for elderly people recently opened. And they have a specialized clinic. Uh, it's a collaboration between other disciplines like orthopedics and geriatrics. They have also Jerry clinic and also uh, dermatology and, and geriatrics. They have uh, derma geriatric clinic. So now common facts, we know for sure that the global population is aging. And we know between uh, 2015 and 2050, the world's population over 60 will increase from 12 to 22 percent. And in 2020, a few years ago, the number of people aged 60 years and older outnumber children less than five years. This has happened for the first time. We have more older people aged more than 60 than uh, children younger than five years. The faster growing group is the people who are older than 80 years. And in 2050, 80% of people will be living in low and middle income countries. Most countries will face challenges with this demographic shift, uh, especially social uh, and health uh, systems will be a uh, challenge if we don't prepare for that. And this data is from WHO. So my question or the question I propose here, are we ready for this demographic shift? Because with all their age, you need to be ready in, in many ways, environment, uh, health system, many of the healthcare professionals, they will spend significant time um, dealing with older patients. So the Qatar, um, in Qatar here, the people, the population more than 60, according to 2017, um, uh, sense it, uh, total uh, is 2.38%. The life expectancy in Qatar, 77.3 for men and 79.9 for women, which is equivalent to uh, life expectancy in, in Western uh, uh, societies. And this is because of the good health uh, system in the country. Uh, in the national health strategy, um, they put in the seven priority population group and the number seven is healthy aging uh, vision. And they focus on uh, active and independent population, empowered elderly to maximize their health and quality of life and increase access to rehab services. So Qatar is working hard to uh, uh, um, do the change, uh, go is the change happening in the uh, demographic shift. This is another question. Um, if you, I want to hear from you if you enjoy working with older people. Dr. Mahmoud, are you able to see the poll? Yes, I can see. Okay, so most of you said agree. Um, in the next one, um, if you can share with us in the chat, tell us why you enjoy working with the older people. And if you disagree, also tell us why you disagree. Tell us why you disagree or agree. Yeah. I haven't seen anyone says disagree. 
So most mm -hmm. people agree or neutral. If you can share some uh, on the chat, why? Anything, Kim? Uh, not yet. I think people are still typing. I can see a couple of messages being typed. Um, uh, I agree because they will share good experiences. Um, I learn from their experiences. They are interesting because of the wealth of experience. They know exactly what they want usually to feel younger. Yeah. Which is very true, right? They have the wisdom of the experience and uh, we, we should uh, use these experiences. Some more comments coming up. Older people are like children, learn from them more, treat them like our parents. Nice. Because they took care of us when we were younger, right? So it's like we are paying back what they provided us, uh, definitely. So it's our turn to take care of the older people um, and just pay a little bit of what they did for us when we were younger, whether they're parents, patients, family members, all of them. Okay, thank you. So now uh, we're gonna discuss challenges with age. And uh, why the age is uh, an issue. We know for sure there are some biological changes and uh, because aging results from the impact of accumulation of white um, molecular and cellular damage that the affect the decrease in physical and mental capacity and increase the risk of disease and ultimately this. So as we age, there's uh, cells uh, metabolism, cells uh, generation, regeneration, all that I uh, think affect our physical and mental capacity. Also, there are some psychological, psychosocial changes. Uh, for example, retirement, people are used to work every day and one of a sudden they are retired and they have to stay at home. This is not easy for them. Uh, deaths of a spouse or family also care as we age. And some of them, they relocate because they cannot survive independently. They have to be in a nursing home. So there are lots of psychosocial changes happen with age, which affect also the life of, uh, of, of the people. Uh, there is decrease in physiological reserve. And what I mean by that, our body, our organs, uh, when people born, they born with uh, lots of physiological reserve. Meaning, for example, our lungs, they have units that do the job for us. Like we exchange gases in the lung, you know, we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out uh, carbon dioxide. These units called alveoli in the lung. And when people were born, they were born with uh, lots of alveoli. Some of them are active, functioning, and some of them saved uh, for like a spare part when, when the body needs them. For example, if somebody got infection like pneumonia and some of the alveoli become inactive, the reserve or the spare alveoli will start becoming functioning. And that's why uh, younger people, if they get pneumonia, they don't suffer the same way as older people because all the older people they lose this physiological reserve. And that's why they are more prone to severe infection and uh, even this. Same thing, other organs like the kidneys, they have uh, units called nephrons, the brain uh, have units called neurons. And in all organs, they, we were born with physiological reserves, but unfortunately we lose them with age. There is also decrease in internal capacity and the definition of internal capacity, like the composite of all physical and mental capacities that individual can utilize at any point of their lifetime. And there is also decrease in functional capacity. So with age also, we get many medical conditions. Uh, some of them are genetics, uh, some of them 
uh, because of behavior or habits, we, we get them. And for every medical condition, of course, we get uh, drugs, medication. And many of our older people, they are getting more than five drugs per day, which is something we call polypharmacy. And this is also affect the person because uh, the metabolism in the body uh, is changed as we age. So the fat water distribution in, the, in our body changes as we uh, age. And this is affect drug absorption. It affects the drug distribution in the body and also drug execution. And that's why we should be very careful when we uh, give medications to older people. Usually we start with very low dose and increase slowly because uh, we want to know how their body react to the drug. Also, um, um, polypharmacy or the person who ha who's taking more than five drugs, we have many studies that showed this is uh, make them prone to fractures uh, from falls. So uh, every visit, um, you have to bring your medications if you don't know the very, well, know them very well to your doctor, review them with your doctor and uh, check some of them, uh, some drugs we don't even advise to be given to older people. So this is a summary of what I said. There is decline in physiological reserve, as we mentioned, and this is affect how we react to the disease when it affects us. Uh, there is also, as I mentioned, environmental and pharmacological changes happen with age. And there is also the medical condition, pathological conditions. Uh, people, as we age, they get lots of medical conditions like diabetes, hypertension, kidney problem, lung problem, all that. And all that make uh, elderly people very vulnerable to complications. Uh, even if the problem is mild, if I give a younger person in the in the twenties and somebody in the seventies the same disease, the younger people they will recover faster because of their physiological reserve because of their spare part. While older people, they uh, takes time for them to recover. We know also as uh, healthcare professionals uh, that the diseases. Uh, in elderly people might present differently. For example, we taught in medical school, uh, if you have uh, cough and fever and shortness of breath, this is probably a chest infection like pneumonia or something like that. Uh, for elderly people, they might not have, for example, fever because fever is our immune response um, to the infection. And like the immune system, like every system in the body slows down with age, they might not have fever. They might just present with shortness of breath, difficulty breathing and, and cough, for example. So fever doesn't exclude infection in elderly people. Um, sometimes if they have disease, for example, they have rheumatoid or they have uh, uh, chronic cough, or chronic bronchitis or emphysema, which we call chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, their presentation to the disease or exacerbation, if they have acute attack, the presentation might be different from older people, from younger people. For example, patient with rheumatoid arthritis, they might present with incontinence. One of a sudden they start to pee on, their, on themselves. People with uh, chronic bronchitis or emphysema might present with uh, just being falling. They, they, new symptoms appear. They can present like other people or younger people with the same complaint of shortness of breath or uh, fever, or, but it's not usually, uh, it's not only the uh, presentation of disease. It could be also different. Many times in the hospital, uh, they present with just change in, in mental status, like confusion, change from their functional status, change from baseline. And these are all important. Uh, I get many times phone calls from people. I think my mom uh, is getting demented. What happened to your mom? She's confused. She doesn't recognize us. She's saying something uh, that's uh, unlogic. Uh, dementia doesn't develop in, in days or even one month. Uh, it, it takes time. So most of these changes, is, it means that there is some underlying problem going on presented like this, presented like mental status changes or confusion. 
And this is mostly we see on the hospital. We see many elderly people come with confusion, with uh, just begin, start uh, to fall. Uh, they have dizziness or they have incontinence, which or decline in functional status. So they used to walk, they used to do their uh, home activities, but one of a sudden they stopped doing it. It doesn't mean that uh, this is aging process. There is definitely something ongoing uh, under these presentations. And these, it could be something mild, sometimes just simple urinary tract infection make them present like this. Sometimes uh, I remember a long time ago, I got phone call uh, also for somebody who uh, just refused to go to the bathroom. His uh, hygiene, his activity got affected. And when they were taking the person to the doctor, they found that he has uh, herpes zoster. So he, he has, which is very, very painful. Zoster is very painful in the skin lesion, but he couldn't say that I have zoster uh, lesion or I have pain here. It's just presented completely differently. So we as healthcare professionals, we have to be very careful. When we see changes in, from baseline and you guys also, if you're taking care of all the people, any change in, in baseline, it could be something. It could be something simple like constipation. If they haven't moved their bowel for three days or four days, especially if they are bedridden, they, this is, might cause them confusion or change in mental status. And it could be something serious like heart attack or stroke. And that's why we think about almost same possibilities if, when people come with change in mental status and confusion. And we run tests and we do physical, we do physical exam and test for many diseases to make sure that it's not life-threatening condition. And if it's some, something simple, we treat it. With all, uh, again, uh, changes are not linear. Everybody is different. Um, uh, but in general, people can maintain their function. So people as we age, despite all this physiological, uh, loss of physiological reserve and internal capacity and, and decrease in function and slowness, they can still maintain their function and uh, their internal capacity unless they task with illness. So a person can be doing their job uh, as usual, but when they get sick, they deteriorate. Uh, or if you challenge them with multitasking, if you give them what we call three steps command, take this paper with your right hand, put it in the left sh uh, shelf and write something or give it to your uh, son or your daughter later. If you give them um, multiple command, they also get confused. So these are the two things we have to be careful with. Also for older people, not all abnormalities require evaluation and treatments. We count for patient's value and preferences. For example, if somebody fell and, and broke their hip, we don't have to force them to go for surgery. Maybe their uh, functional status is already limited and you don't want to uh, expose them to surgery and complications of surgery. So we discuss usually with family, with patient and family, the pros and cons for each condition. And at the end of the day, it's according to their preference and their value. And here also we count for the functional status. Uh, if the person is active and uh, uh, exercise three times a week and has good shape and all that, uh, it's okay. Even if they are 94 and they wanna go for surgery, yeah, it's fine. But if they, are, uh, they have limited functional status or bedridden, um, we have to weigh the risk and benefit of the surgery. And this is just one example. So seeing your doctor, I put this here because I'm, uh, I'm not sure if there are uh, healthcare professionals in the audience. I think this is something just to remind ourselves that we should ask about. And for other people also, if you're taking care of uh, elderly people, these are the things also you want to look at and discuss with your doctor when you go to the doctor. So functional status is extremely important. We try to make people active uh, work, even if they're supposed to do cooking in the house, moving the hands and moving in the uh, kitchen, preparing something, it's, it's doing some activity, some exercise is good for them. And we know for sure um, the functional status predicts the outcome. For example, if somebody got heart attack or any, any infection, COVID, whatever, 
their functional status predicts the outcome. We know from their previous condition before they get the infection or the heart attack or the stroke, whether they will recover well from this disease or they will deteriorate based on the functional status. As I mentioned, we can make a diagnosis from it. Uh, any change in their functional status may indicate that there is some disease or some problem going on. We also, if we see changes, uh, they, they, there is change in, in mental status or function, and we start treating them, the response to the treatment also we can see uh, when we see change in, or improvement in their uh, function. We ask about the history of falls, because uh, if somebody fall, uh, has a fall, uh, we, we are 100% positive if he's going to have the second and the third. If he, if he survives and doesn't have any fracture, the second or third time may have fracture. And fracture is a, is a problem for elderly people. I've seen many people who just, they were active in the community. They are doing their job nicely. And they had a fall. They went to the hospital. They had uh, surgery, they developed delirium, confusion, dementia, and they never, they never went back to the community as before. So usually the outcome was false. This is if they survive surgery. Some of them, they don't survive surgery. They get complications from surgery and they die. So the best thing is to prevent these kind of, of issues, falls. Hearing and visual problem, because we can fix that. If somebody has hearing problem, we can do something we can we can give them a hearing aid visual impairment could be some, from just simple cataract a simple surgery like day surgery it's not a, a big surgery it can be treated easily so all these things we we have to discuss with uh, with patients and uh, you as family member also make sure that you bring it to your uh, doctor uh, um, we ask about uh, if the person able to do a few things at home, what we call activities of daily living, that's the, that's the must do in the house, like uh, showering or dressing or using the toilet and eating. If there is problem with this, it means that the person need 24 hour help. Either you hire somebody or uh, insurance or a government give you someone to help you or family members have to help. But if there is impairment in this uh, activity of daily living, it means that the person needs help. The higher function, like transportation, shopping, cooking, laundry, all that, this, if there is impairment, maybe that person needs help like once a week or once a month or something like that. It depends on the person. But it means like uh, it needs little help. Also, we have to ask about nutrition if people live by themselves, we have to make sure that they are able to eat uh, balanced food and not living only on cereals and, uh, and unhealthy food. Social support, extremely important, extremely important. Social support, being active in the community, uh, with have friends, family member, visit communication. Uh, if you can give them a job to teach uh, kids something or go with the kids to do something is extremely important. We also ask about memory and uh, I've seen every, every place I go now, people complain about their memory even they were, uh, they are young and they say, I don't remember what I ate for breakfast this morning or I don't remember what I ate yesterday or where did I go or I forgot what, uh, it's okay, life is busy. Um, there's lots of stress going on and lots of issues ha happening and it's okay to forget. This is not dementia. Demented people or people with Alzheimer, they don't know that they have memory problem. They don't know. If you know that you have memory problem, you are not demented. Uh, also, depression is very common in older people and uh, we have to screen them, we have to treat them. Uh, Self-neglect, uh, elderly abuse, um, unfortunately, we see it sometimes here. Um, I remember one patient I saw as a student, um, he, he was on dialysis and he was living alone. And when we asked about activities and how he pray, and he said, I don't pray because I cannot clean myself. Uh, this is definitely neglect and nobody is around to help him clean himself. So we see such uh, things sometimes. So this person may be better for him to be in a nursing home. 
um, and usually in this case, we involve the social worker and they try to find solution for them. And also uh, don't forget to give them immunization and screening. Uh, like right now, the flu season, every elderly people should get the flu vaccine. Uh, screening, we have general rule. If the person has uh, life expectancy more than 10 years, they should go for a screening. For example, for breast cancer, uh, for colon cancer, they can do the colonoscopy or mammography. If they have good function and they have uh, uh, maybe at least 10, 10 years to live. Elderly people can get all other diseases like young people. But these things are very common in elderly people. The one I mentioned here, dementia, depression, delirium. And this is called in, in medicine, geriatric syndrome, because um, um, it's more common in elderly people. The three Ds, uh, dementia, depression, delirium. Delirium is acute confusion. The, start, the situation I mentioned when people get sick and they get confused for some times. And when you treat uh, the infection or the reason for the delirium, usually they go back to their normal. Uh, immobility, falls and gait disorders, urinary incontinence, very common problem, weight loss and malnutrition. Uh, pressure ulcers, if they are bedridden, again, many medications, more than five. And new concepts also, or, or new uh, entity called frailty. And I put a slide, a slide uh, on frailty because it's a new uh, entity that is very, very important for elderly people. Uh, because again, it predicts um, outcome uh, for, from uh, many diseases. Um, and what is frailty is a clinical state or syndrome that associated with adverse health outcome. There are many scales or tools, more than 67 tools that you can use to measure frailty. Uh, I put here the frailty phenotype because it's easy. Usually a uh, patient has any or the person has unintentional weight loss. They have weakness uh, measured by grip strength, a special tool. Uh, they have self-reported exhaustion, slow walking, low physical activity. And many people say, uh, healthcare professionals, they say they, they know the patient is frail when they uh, look at them. And that's why they call frailty phenotype. If the person has more than three is frail, if they have one or two is pre-frailty. This is a, a scale used here in Hamid, clinical uh, frailty scales. And we encourage people to use it more and more because it's important uh, disease to take care of. Okay, uh, life gets better as we get older. I want to hear your uh, response after all the challenges we mentioned. So most people disagree. Maybe they got affected by what I said about the challenges uh, with aging. And again, I want to stress that these challenges or these changes are not uh, linear. So everybody can age uh, differently. And we see many healthy people as I will show later in, in my presentation. So I just want to share this uh, quickly. And this is from New York time and this is US data. I'm not sure if we have data here from Qatar, um, but the myth is older adults are less productive. And this is a number showing against that. So 30% of women, for example, 65 uh, to 69, and 18% 870 uh, are, uh, are working. Um, no relationship between age and job performance. I think if anything, I heard from you guys that experience count and experience is very, very, very important uh, to do the job. So they might be doing better job uh, or job performance than, than younger people. Um, older people also report better marriage and friendship. I guess they have the wisdom, they have the experience to choose better. Um, and also, um, 
uh, some continue to do their work as artists and as writers. And I have some examples I will share at the end. So now we go to the healthy aging. And this is just a quote uh, I found is being able to do the things we value for as long as possible, number of years ahead. So how can we age um, healthy? This is again from WHO. And this is again, as I mentioned before, uh, people are different. These people are the same age, but some have the level of functioning of a 30 years old and some require full-time assistance, the person on the right. There are many factors, individual factors, uh, behavior, for example, like uh, smoking and others we can change. And some are environmental uh, factors we have to consider uh, elderly and uh, older people, older community. And we have to change the way we think about aging and older people that will help in healthy aging. This slide I took two weeks ago in a third Qatar International Geriatric Conference here in Qatar in uh, Sheraton. And this corner is about healthy aging. So it starts from middle age or maybe younger. You have to work from uh, maybe 40 or 45, something for, uh, like that to think about plan your, your age ahead. So maintain healthy lifestyle. You have to work on your muscle strength, uh, regular resistance exercise. We know as we age, we lose muscle mass, but the bone uh, more or less stay the same. So uh, the, this is uh, imbalance, uh, make us more prone to falls. And that's why from maybe 45, 50, we have to work on strengthening our muscle. And we have to control the chronic diseases. If you already have diabetes, if you already have hypertension or any other chronic diseases, you have to work hard to control it and make it better. Keep your social life. Again, social life is very important. Uh, these uh, two ladies are playing, enjoying what they are doing. Uh, if you have a stress, nobody is uh, excluded for, or exempt from stress these days. So yoga and meditation are good things to do. And keep the positive attitude. Think always positive people who say age is just a number. I don't care. I don't care. They hate that question. How old are you? Uh, and uh, they keep the positive attitude. Um, these are some exercises you can do. Uh, balance and resistance training. Uh, gait and balance training. And again, when we ask about history of falls and we, we notice older people, they have imbalance, we can refer them for physical therapy, for rehab, for gait and balance training. Uh, strength training, uh, Tai Chi, uh, any movement like Tai Chi or dance, this is available on YouTube, you can do very good. Aerobics, if you can do aerobics, of course, it helps the heart and it also helps the muscle. Vitamin D supplement, if the person doesn't uh, eat uh, uh, dairy products or they don't have good sun exposure or they have low vitamin D, you can supplement that. Medications, we have to be very careful. There are some medications that make people false. Uh, for example, uh, uh, stomach medication, PPI, almost everybody I know in the clinic, they are taking some sort of uh, proton bomb inhibitors like Nexium and all these. And, and these are associated with fall and, and bone problems. So all the time, uh, ask yourself, do I need this medication? Ask your doctor if you need this medication. Can I stop it? Um, and also, you bring some uh, like uh, physical therapist or occupational therapist to visit home and check the environment uh, and use assistive technology like the light comes with uh, sensor light. Uh, these are, again, some... Uh, uh, exercises they do in, in, in rehab. Uh, this study almost uh, confirmed the same thing I just mentioned, going and doing. I see many people in my clinic at age 60 or 65, they already retired. And some of them, they are well educated with PhD. And I say, why you don't go and uh, work? Why you don't volunteer? Because if you stay at home and you don't challenge your brain, you don't learn new things, your brain will, will sleep and you will deteriorate faster. And sometimes they tell me they don't have opportunity for, for volunteering. And some they say they are not welcome in companies because, they, because of their age. And that's why I asked the question earlier, if you enjoy working with older people. And I wish for all uh, governments and all societies 
to think differently about older people and give them opportunity for uh, volunteering jobs and use their experience and wisdom um, and make them active because this is very important. Uh, this is again from the conference. Um, I took the picture and this they're talking about the things that you should avoid to age healthy. Uh, physical inactivity, smoking um, is a bad habit and usually make people look older. Uh, head injuries, uh, air pollution, infrequent social contact. Again, social contact, social relationship is extremely important. I know People are getting busier and life is not like before. Everybody at home work, uh, women, uh, men, kids, and sometimes the elderly people left behind. And sometimes I see them in the clinic coming with a uh, uh, maid or coming with a nurse. And we, many times we have to call their kids to discuss something. Uh, as of November 4, uh, two days ago, this is the oldest living person in Guinness. Uh, I'm sure may maybe there are some that not known, but this woman is aged as of November 4, 116 years and 245 days. Uh, she lives in uh, Spain, so people can make it to 116. And this is the all longest lifespan. This lady lived 122 years and 164 days. So she lived in France uh, and uh, what I read about her, she loves sports. So she exercises all the time. I guess she never work, she never work, uh, but she loves sports and active life. And uh, also in the, in the internet, she sold her uh, apartment to a lawyer. She was uh, 80 years old, he was 40. And the deal was to pay her every month 2000 till she dies and then he can take her apartment. And guess what? He died before her and his wife also continued to pay for the apartment for one year and then she died and she got the apartment. So one to 22 years. Again, many elderly people are healthy and working. This lady at age 95 decided to go to college and graduate from college at age 95. Uh, Grandma Moses produced her last painting at age 103. These people publish uh, the book at age 105. Surfer in the news at age 83. And many more, I'm sure we don't know. Uh, coming to the office in the morning, I heard somebody from a man uh, talking about grandmother who used to tell stories for kids and he said uh, she died two years ago and her age was 120. So I'm sure there are many people that we don't know about. Uh, this from the Sudanese revolution, this lady participated in the revolution and social life and politician, uh, leaders, uh, iconic people. Uh, they uh, contributed a lot and they functioned very well at, at older age. So this is all I have to say and happy to take uh, any question from you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mahmoud. We always, uh, always enjoy listening to you. Um, I'm just gonna come back on the screen one moment. Yep, we, thank you so much. And we've got a lot of questions coming up and I just wanna start off with kind of the thoughts that you left us with of important lifestyles and and you touched on it briefly this is a two-part question so can you briefly talk about the importance of physical activity and maybe some give us some practical tips and how we can you know maintain uh, how elders can maintain their physical activity uh, as i said um it should start from early like from middle age um like now, I think everybody my age should be working on a uh, strengthening resistant exercise to strengthen the muscle because we know that we're going to lose muscles and this is make us uh, prone to falls and all that. Um, if for older people, I think it depends um, on the people. I don't want somebody who never exercise just to start going to the gym and do some activities. It should be slow 
and if they have an exercise, if they have any medical illness, they have to get clearance from their doctor before they start any exercise. I would say eat healthy, try to avoid fat, um, uh, sugar, uh, lots of carbs. So eat healthy and do some activities. Usually people say if you do three hours in a week, it's more than enough. And you can start with simple things. Walking, the weather is nice now. People can walk. Uh, tai Chi, as I mentioned, is very good exercise for, for older people. And you can do in YouTube. You can start slow. For more active people, I know people in their 80s, they play tennis, they jog, they run. So I think it depends. So if the person is already active, they should continue doing their activity. For people who are not active, they can start slow. We always in geriatric, we say... Uh, start low and go slow so uh, even doing household activities and 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 uh, uh, in the house it can help um, stationary bike uh, at home also walking in, in uh, during summer uh, the weather was hot i see many people walking in the malls uh, do around activity but generally they say uh, three hours um, like 150 minutes per week it's more than enough Great, great. Thank you. I know you also briefly touched on the number of medications that el the elderly sometimes take. There is a lot. So there's a question Dr. Fatima asks, considering the damage to kidneys, do you still recommend supplements, vitamins for elderly who are already taking multiple drugs? This is a good question. Uh, and I think in a recent study I've seen, uh, and survey done in the US, I think more than 40 uh, people, elderly people, they said they use alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. And usually people, they don't mention it to their doctor because they don't think it's important. You ask the patient, how many medication you take? I take blood pressure. We have to ask, do you take any supplement? So um, uh, I think very important for medication that the doctor prescribed, uh, we, the kidney function, the kidney function very much depends on the mass uh, muscles, the muscle mass. So if the person is thin and frail and their uh, blood tests show like normal uh, creatinine, which is a function for the kidney, it doesn't mean that their kidney is working perfectly. They have to calculate something called creatinine clearance or calculate the kidney function, especially for frail people or thin people to know the real function of the kidney. If the function of the kidney is low, then all medication has to be changed. Some medication we don't give, some medication we lower the dose. For supplements, I think also we have to check because there are many supplements that cause interaction with medication, with drugs. Many supplements cause side effects. So we have, we have to check and, and see what medication they take, uh, supplement if there is any interaction with the medication, and if there is any side effects they have to be aware of. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a, such a comprehensive answer. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud, Salaluddin is asking about sleep changes and how, um, you know, the sleep changes that come with aging, how it might affect uh, general well-being of the elderly. It's a good question. Uh, we know with age, uh, people lose the REM sleep, the deep sleep. So uh, their, their sleep become more lighter. Um, so I would advise um, good sleep hygiene. Um, they should avoid, uh, because you want to at least sleep. So they should avoid uh, caffeine, exercise in the evening. Um, the regular thing we say to people. So um, you try to read a book when you feel asleep. Uh, sleep. If you don't feel asleep, get out of the bed. So use the bed only to sleep. Uh, but very important to um, um, uh, decrease the caffeine, maybe from four o'clock or five o'clock. As we age, we become very sensitive to caffeine. I remember in medical school, we used to drink coffee and sleep after to, to, to study and be awake. And after two minutes, we sleep. Now, if I drink coffee, I cannot sleep for two minutes. <laughs> So many changes happened and uh, yeah, uh, it's very good. But I think it's something also to mention with your doctor, make sure that you don't have 
physical problem or psychological problem that uh, preventing you from having good sleep. And if that is exploded, try to do the sleep hygiene, uh, which is uh, avoid any stimulant and try to uh, do reading or something to make you sleep. Uh, and if that doesn't work, you can discuss with your doctor, they can give you some uh, medication. Great. Thank, thank you so much for that answer, uh, Dr. Mahmoud. There are a couple of more questions. So I know we are almost at time. Are you okay for one or two more questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you. Ahead. So this question is on uh, some of the um, emotional challenges that face the elderly. And the person is asking, how can we, what can we do to support their mental well-being? Um, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, if I understood uh, correctly, you're concerned about uh, emotional uh, instability or something. So I think some of many the people, social, yeah, social emotional challenges that they face when they get older, like not maybe not going out or maybe loneliness. I know you mentioned that. Yeah, I think we have to ask why, why are they feeling this way? For many people who they used to be active and controlling everything uh, in the house, they cook, they take care of their kids, uh, wife or husband, and one of a sudden become, they feel like they are useless. Uh, kids mm -hmm. become independent, uh, husband in, or wife uh, left or uh, died, and they find themselves, that's why I say social, social, um, social life is important. Mm -hmm. um, try to keep them busy, try to make them feel that they are important and contributing, uh, take them out. Um, um, and, and we have to make sure that they don't have depression. Depression is very, very common in elderly. Mm -hmm. So make sure that they don't have depression. Uh, make sure that their thyroid function is working fine because also it resembles depression. Um, and uh, just, I think, make them active. The problem here in our society, in our community, as to show respect to elderly people, we ask them to stay at home. You stay at home, we bring everything to you. We do everything to you, which is not good. We want them to go out. We want them to contribute. Uh, and uh, in the US, for example, they have daycare. And daycare, they go and socialize. I remember here also, Ihsan used to do the same thing. They socialize with each other. They learn new skills. They learn computers how to pay their bills by computer, how to use their phone, uh, how to do exercise. So something like that, I think is important to have. Thank, thank you so much. And, and finally, the last question, um, what can we do to, you know, kind of encourage that intergenerational understanding to kind of, so that, you know, both the elderly and the younger generations in our community i know it's getting lesser and lesser but why how can we promote that community understanding and support among the generations this is a one million dollars question <laughs> i think yeah you see in, in tv for example uh, i know in the us specifically there are many programs uh, address generation gap I've seen on TV, they bring somebody young and somebody old and they ask questions from, from older, like music or some from old gener for the old generation and young generation and they compete. And I, I enjoyed that uh, show. So I think uh, teaching uh, awareness, uh, especially for young people about uh, the changes in older people, how you handle them, how you can respect them. I think in, in this part of the world, we still have great respect for older people and they still uh, contribute to day-to-day -day decision in the family. Um, we should keep that. We should teach our kids to respect that. Um, and uh, for older people, um, I don't know how to make them <laughs> because I, I'm sure life is now different for them. And some of them struggle with that. Some of them, they are not happy with how kids uh, ask why should I do that or uh, it's not easy <laughs> it's not easy yeah I guess I would say in, in one word awareness for both uh, both spectrum 
Yeah, no, no, that that's a great, great thought for us you know, to leave us with uh, you know, the the for us to take that message back to be more aware of the elderly generation, to be more aware of their needs, to be more aware of their feelings. So I think thank you so much. There are lots of comments coming in saying thank yous, lots of appreciation. So thank you so much once again. I